We know where it's, what its capabilities should be once it clears out the supply. The problem is we can't guess when that happens. We can't anticipate when that happens because if you anticipate and you guess, I promise you're going to get run over 99 out of 100 times. So we have to wait for this channel to get confirmed. But just in case mRNA finally kind of wakes up tomorrow, I definitely want to launch the top of this channel here. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, I usually take uh, Thursday nights off. Um, Tuesday, if you guys remember, there was no video. Uh, I had this crazy uh, migraine. I was incredibly dehydrated, so I took Tuesday off. So uh, basically recording uh, the video today. So let's, let's talk about yesterday, right? Yesterday, uh, we had a lot of action. I was focusing primarily on, on Tesla and pretty much missed everything else. And today, again, I, I came in, I learned my lesson, I kind of removed all the, you know, all the uh, concentration from one individual stock and kind of just looked at the overall market. And today kind of played out like we talked about uh, last night in the video. I, I thought technology uh, was tired, right? Just was a little bit tired. Again, nobody was calling for Armageddon or the destruction of equity prices or anything like that. The market yesterday just felt tired. If you look at the cues, uh, from yesterday, they put in this inverted hammer, and again, today they just kind of drifted uh, right to the five-day moving average, and the names that we talked about yesterday that I felt that they just needed a break, and you know, names like Amazon, right? Names like Amazon, uh, and names uh, like Apple, and names like Facebook all gave uh, signals yesterday they just were tired. Not shorts, right? They're not necessarily shorts. They're just names that were tired, and they just needed a break. And, you know, we, we didn't know how much uh, value we were going to have going into today's session because again it's a couple of days uh, before uh, Labor Day, right? The long Labor Day uh, weekend, and the question was how much value, right? It's so all we needed to know, and the most important part is we got our answer uh, very, very quickly. Uh, there wasn't 600 pivots, obviously, just because you have you know, all these names resting. You had um, you had Google, Roku. Uh, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Square, all resting, right? And that's a good, healthy thing. Uh, the last thing you want to do is even see the most aggressive bulls turn around and say, well, look, we're going up too far, too fast. We need a break. We have to start selling the market. It's not about that, right? Number one, and number one, I, I should have let uh, kind of let off with this. Hopefully, everybody was safe. Yesterday, um, when I was recording the video, there was no, I, I, I live in New Jersey, there was absolutely no, um, you know, there was nothing in the forecast that, that would suggest this crazy, ridiculous storm came and you know, it was sunny outside. And next thing I knew around, you know, 6.30, we got all these tornado and hurricane warnings and it was crazy last night. So hopefully everybody uh, was staying safe. Uh, hopefully your home uh, and property is staying in one place. But more important, I hope you and your family uh, are safe. Literally came uh, out of nowhere. But to kind of come, come back into today's session, we, you know, we didn't know what to expect today. Uh, we did believe that the overall technology group was going to rest. That's exactly what they did. And I just wanted to see how much value there was. And, and we say this all the time. It's not how many uh, you trade for the day. It's, it's all about your game plan. It's all about uh, putting yourself in a position that you are in control of your trading. But number one, you're identifying the opportunities. Even if the market is uh, taking back of a little bit of back test, a little bit of rest, you're in a position that you're identifying situations that you feel comfortable that are falling under your sweet spot and you're trying to take advantage. Now, going into tomorrow's session, look, you, you, you could probably have similar to today's day. There's definitely opportunities, I believe, in tomorrow's action and tomorrow's tape uh, that could give you a pretty good scenario, right? Like give you a, a pretty good synopsis of the overall tape. But I don't, I really don't believe uh, that you are going to see the, the full dynamics of the market until after Labor Day, when everybody comes back, kind of gets their, you know, their last jolt of summer out of their system. Their kids are going back to school. My kids start school next Thursday. I know some of you guys, uh, your kids already started, but I think we're going to get a, a good sense of what happens next. Again, traditionally, the fourth quarter has been a really good um, time for equity prices. Again, kind of going back uh, to the whole you know festivities of New Year, uh, of Christmas, 
uh, all these January effects, all that Kibben Caboodle, and again, we'll kind of dive into that uh, towards the latter part of the year. But the overall action continues to be good. Uh, are you going to make mental mistakes certain days? Absolutely. Are you, your focus are going to be on stocks that are just not in play for that day because you have a strong bias? Absolutely. Are you going to be great one day, right? Absolutely. And you're going to be shitty one day. Absolutely, right? That's the whole uh, formula, right? That's all the ingredients about uh, being a trader, but a professional trader, aspiring trader. You kind of mix all that crap up. You drink it, you digest it, and hopefully you move forward learning uh, valuable uh, lessons throughout um, the week, right? So let's talk about, you know, let's talk about some names that I do like tomorrow. Again, I'm not bullish tomorrow. I'm not biased uh, tomorrow. One way or another, gun to my head, I, say, I still say we still see much more value to the upside tomorrow. But there's still names that I'm watching uh, that haven't confirmed yet to the downside. But I'm, you know, I'm watching them. You know, I'm definitely, definitely watching them in just in case uh, there is a rug pull. So let me give you guys some names that I definitely like uh, for tomorrow. Uh, and again, we'll get to the individual pivots today in a second. Letter U is great. If you guys remember, um, we've been talking about Letter U for a couple of updates now. We, we talked about this level here. It got rejected off 129. This was definitely the trade for me today. Uh, this thing just absolutely went bananas. I said there was a shot it gets to 35, went to 34 and change. I still like this thing. Um, I believe it was even highlighted. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe it was also highlighted today on uh, CNBC. Maybe it was unusual options, whatever the case may be. But you definitely want to use weakness for tomorrow into a rising 60-minute support to try to catch that bottom range. Because if shorts get uh, if shorts get trapped, eager shorts get trapped on potential quote unquote profit taking, you could get a squeeze right back uh, to red to green. Um, you know, I also like NET. I, it broke out. Uh, a couple of days ago, broke out a couple of days ago, rested today, put in an inside day. If NET starts building above this channel here, you know, the last couple of days supply, you can get another move up there as well. That looks good. You know, I, I've been watching this mRNA now. It feels like for weeks and weeks and weeks. And every single time it teases you that you're about to attack the top of the range here, it kind of rolls over again with some sort of FDA news or COVID news, whatever the case may be. But again, we, we know the top area, right? We, we know the top congestion where it needs to clear out supply. We know where it's, what its capabilities should be once it clears out the supply. The problem is we can't guess when that happens. We can't anticipate when that happens because if you anticipate and you guess, I promise you you're going to get run over 99 out of 100 times. So we have to wait for this channel to get confirmed. But just in case mRNA finally kind of wakes up tomorrow, I definitely want to watch the top of this channel here. It's been rejected here twice, same area twice. Well, I got to look at the chart and see what the price is. Uh, two times in a row, if it just com confirms this channel here, there is a possibility to the upside. Tesla, again, is still, still resting, right? It's still resting after that 730 break. Uh, we're still seeing big 740, 750 call buyers come in for the weeklies and for next week. But the price action is still consolidating. And again, it's been kind of like that on and off now for the last uh, two months on Tesla. You have this big break like we had on Monday, and then you have like these these rolling channels that are tighter and tighter and tighter. Eventually, something has to give. You have to give the bulls here the benefit of the doubt. But again, does it have to uh, confirm you know Monday's price action tomorrow? Of course not, right? But again, it's something uh, we definitely need to watch uh, and kind of uh, you know have it on our radar. Is it going to be my focus tomorrow? Absolutely not. But the point is, it has to be on the radar. And the most important part of that is we have to be conscious of where the stock can absolutely go next. Again, just to put on the back burner. So tomorrow, uh, again, I'll probably trade till about lunchtime tomorrow. I, I think after lunch tomorrow, you know, it's going to be a graveyard. If you know, if you're sitting there trying to squeeze out a day after lunch, uh, you know, you know, a day before uh, a three-day weekend, you're probably going to be very, very disappointed. So you know, try to squeeze out as much as you can. Value obviously is the name of the game for the first three hours or so, and then see what happens. Uh, after that. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, some really, really aggressive pivots today. Netflix that we covered last night in the video never gave us an opportunity to, to remount, right? To, to kind of a retrace into the 578 remount. But then you started seeing aggressive call buyers come in one after another after another. They were coming for the 90, 590 for the 600 weeklies. And, you know, here's the pivot here. 586 is a sneaky area needs to build for experienced traders. And Netflix went absolutely nuts, right? Went absolutely nuts here. Here was the 586, right? You see this area here, 585.80, 585.45. So once it took out the 586, it took out the previous high of 591 and went all the way up. Uh, all the way up to 599, just an absolute incredible move uh, on Netflix. Again, still riding that 
uh, Jerry Seinfeld, um, you know, PR. Uh, letter U again. This is definitely my trade of the day. 129 rejected twice on daily. We've been we've been covering the letter U now for a couple of updates in a row. Uh, went nuts. Went absolutely nuts. This is. I mean, just let me get in. This candle kind of speaks for itself. Uh, took out the 29. Beautiful, beautiful move. Before it even pulled back, it went. Uh, the 330, uh, 132. So it was a beautiful, beautiful move on letter U. Definitely no complaints uh, there. Uh, FISV, I was watching for 120, never even got close to FI, you know, F, never even came close to 120. Uh, not only did it not come close to 120, they just sold that sucker off uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, OKTA, right? Uh, you know, OKTA shook off a negative earnings reaction last night, got upgraded this morning. They say, hey, if this thing could build, uh, 267, it can wake up, and OKTA put in a really, really nice move. So here is the 267. Here was last night's. Here was last night's reaction. It was down four percent, but once you started seeing it going green uh, pre-market, that you knew, you knew there was a shot here that it took out the 267 level and traded right uh, into the 276 supply. Really, really big move. Again, very good value on a day that we really didn't ex have any high hopes or any. Uh, you know, really big expectations for it, but this is what's great about the market. Patience will pay you, right? Patience will reward you from putting in the research and waiting for the price action to play out. So uh, we talked about it. Second entries on everything today. We're getting close to a long weekend. It's possible we have a slower session with tighter ranges. Keep that in mind, right? Just keep that in mind. Have a nice day. And we were, you know, we got some pretty good value. Uh, 1850 on open, not a big move, but 1850 needs a strong base. Here was open, um, 1850. Again, traded to 1890. It still looks good. This is the highest close in this whole formation. I still think uh, there's a shot this thing sees that $20 level, but really nice, you know, nice little pop here. And now it's just kind of uh, formulating a new base uh, leg higher. Uh, Netflix, huge move there. Uh, sick move, just an absolute sick move on, on you know, on, um, on Netflix. You had a big, big move on, on letter U. Take you know take on the way up on uh, OKTA Peloton PLTR had a lot of good call volume that that, that I will tell you had a lot of good call volume not a big move right 2670 needs to build only went to 2689 but a lot of call volume they were coming in for next week's I believe 28th the January 33s I have to double check but really aggressive call buying uh, again you have to be patient with this PLTR but this thing continues to look uh, pretty good new highs coming in and open again only a 40 cent move 600 on deck as well so we had good value um, I really like some of the plays for tomorrow but again it's a day before a holiday we don't know how much uh, how many you're going to confirm? But the, remember, guys, the most important part: we don't know how many you're going to confirm. We don't want to guess. We don't want to anticipate. It's not about how many you trade; it's how many you trade properly. Guys, God bless. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys on, um, I guess, Tuesday. Right next Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take.